Hi everyone, it's me, Diana, the Doll Fairy. For today's custom doll, we're going back to my roots in doll collecting and customizing. That's right, my obsession with dolls was sparked by none other than the Disney princesses, my lifelong role models and eternal muses. In fact, some of my earliest custom dolls included this doll I made of Anna and Elsa's mother, the Queen of Arendelle, uh, my 17-inch limited edition Elsa doll, I also made dolls of Rapunzel and Cassandra from Tangled the Series. And I also repainted an Ariel doll, which was one of my first ever custom doll videos on my channel. For this past Christmas, I was commissioned to create customized versions of Rapunzel and another Disney princess, who you'll see very soon, for two special little girls named Gia and Ava. I don't normally take commissions, but this was a special case. I'm always excited by the endless potential of the Disney princesses to be redesigned and reimagined, so I jumped at the chance. I'm starting with the Disney Store Classic Rapunzel doll. I think I bought this one last year or even the year before, so it's probably a 2017 version. Uh, and she already has lovely long golden hair. I will, however, be giving her a new face up that's closer to the original animation. And I will also be making her a new dress with some signature doll fairy flair to give her a designer look. I remove her face paint using acetone nail polish remover. Then I cover up her hair to protect it, and I spray her face with two to three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant so that I will be able to draw on the surface of the face. Using my Prismacolor watercolor pencils, I start sketching in her facial features in a light brown. I outline the shape of her lips with pink and fill in the whites of her eyes. I keep referencing images of Rapunzel from screenshots of Tangled as I work to make sure that she looks as close as possible to what Rapunzel actually looks like in the movie. Next, I start to brush on some soft pastels for blushing. The shading is important on this doll, especially because Rapunzel was animated in 3D, so once again I'm looking closely at screenshots to recreate that look on the doll. I use a lot of pink, of course, as well as some brown shades for shadow. I blend pinks for her lips. Using pastels to color her lips will look a lot more realistic than painting them on. Next, I go in with a darker brown to further define her lash lines and work on her eyes. I start to carefully add in her lashes with the dark brown as well. I draw some thick lashes on the top eyelid and on the bottom as well. For her irises, I want them to be a bright green, but I also want them to look fairly realistic and accurate to the film. Before using any green, I take my light brown and I add some color around the pupil so that it will have a hazel effect when I add the green. Then I use a vivid green color and have that color start at the outer edge of the iris and work inward to create a bit of a gradient with the brown. I then use a darker green to outline the iris overall. Before spraying another layer of sealant, I use a brown pencil to draw on a sprinkling of freckles across her cheeks and the bridge of her nose. Now for the second layer. 
I add some black to further define and darken the lashes as well as the pupil. I also add an additional layer of pigment to the whites of the eyes, and then work on making the green and hazel in her irises more vivid. I also try to create the illusion of depth by adding some darker shadows to the top half of the iris. Then I brighten up the bottom half of the irises by adding some yellow to the parts that I want to highlight. I love how much more life is suddenly brought into the eyes by the addition of the yellow. I touch up her eyebrows. And then I add some shadows to the whites of her eyes with a soft gray color. I also add more color to her face with pastels, focusing on bringing out that sort of pink glow that Rapunzel has to her skin in Tangled. Then I spray another layer of MSC and work on the finishing touches in this final layer. I think she really looks like Rapunzel. I've always been afraid to repaint a Rapunzel doll for fear that I wouldn't get her face right. They just can't get my nose right. Because for some reason Rapunzel's face is tricky. I've never been able to draw her well, but I'm so proud of her sweet expression. And I really feel like it looks like her. After one final spray, I add the white highlights to her eyes using some acrylic paint. Then I use some Sculpey Gloss to make her lips shiny. And Rapunzel's face is complete! Now we get to decide on how to make her dress. Instead of starting completely from scratch, I decided to make good use of what I already had. I definitely don't want any of this crazy glittery stuff, but I do want to use the signature puffed sleeves from the Disney Store dress, but also the sheer pink half sleeve from this Hasbro Rapunzel dress. So I get to work with my seam ripper. I also take apart the pieces of the Disney Store dress in order to use them to create an accurate pattern. I make some modifications, such as changing the shape of the neckline a little bit, but I follow the basic structure of the Disney Store dress. I use some cotton fabric in this really lovely shade of lilac for the bodice of her dress. Instead of gluing on ribbon to look like their laces in a corset, which is kind of what the Disney Store dress looks like, uh, I want to actually lace my ribbon through the bodice. So I draw on the holes where I want the ribbons to weave in and out. Then I use a nice big needle to actually sew the ribbon into the holes. When I'm done, I tie the ends into a cute little bow, and it looks really sweet! I sew the rest of the bodice pieces together and sew the puff sleeves from the Disney Store dress onto the bodice as well. Next, I sew some of this lovely cream-colored lace onto the edges of the bodice, along with some pink ribbon to cover the edges of the purple fabric. I'm kind of at a loss for words to explain how much I love the way that these look, trimming the bodice, and how much I enjoyed hand sewing it on. I just love lace so much, guys. Like, I don't even know what else to say about it. And the main part of the bodice is complete. I just think it's really beautiful. I kind of can't stop looking at it. <laughs> Next, to attach the sheer sleeve from the Hasbro dress, I'm putting the whole thing underneath the Disney Store sleeve, and then stitching them together. Then I'll add this beautiful pink ribbon trim to create a bell sleeve. I'm so excited about that. First I do a regular running stitch along the ribbon, and then I gather it even more than it already is gathered. Because of the small scale of the doll, I think it'll just look better that way. 
Then I stitch the pink ribbon trim onto the edge of the sleeve while it's on the doll. Even though we're nowhere near finished, I think at this point I was really excited to see how the bodice would look with her golden hair. So I took the hair out of the protective covering and I was not disappointed. Now for the skirt. I want it to be much more flowing and voluminous than the skirt on the original Disney Store dress. So I used the Disney Store skirt to create a pattern and then added more volume to it. For the base of the skirt, I'll be using the same lilac fabric but this is really only to create a purplish undertone beneath the sheer overskirt and the tool that I'll be using to embellish the skirt. I decide to hem the skirt before doing anything else to it because I think it'll be easier this way. I also gather the waistline of the skirt and sew it to a waistband. Then I sew up the back of the skirt and turn it inside out, or right side out, I guess. <laughs> and here's how the underskirt will look. Nice and full and also longer than the Disney Store version. But not too long because it's important that her signature bare feet are still peeking out underneath all that finery. I use more of that lovely lace along the bottom hem of the skirt. Then I gather up some pink tulle to create a tulle panel that will peek through underneath the overskirt I will be making. I stitch it down again along the top to make sure that it stays in place and won't pop upward and look unrealistic. For the overskirt, I finally get to use this lovely sheer fabric with white and pink flowers stitched all over it. I've had it for a while and I've just been waiting for a chance to use it. <laughs> This fabric is a little too white to go with the creamy lace, so after I sew the skirt, I tea stain the fabric to give it a more off-white look. I basically just soak it in a bowl of tea for a little while. Afterwards, the difference isn't too dramatic, but I think it helps the overall cohesiveness of the dress. The overskirt will go over the purple skirt like so. Before attaching it, I'm going to give it even more elegance with more of that gathered pink ribbon along the hem. It looks so ornate and opulent and I love it. <laughs> I pin the overskirt to the purple and stitch it together. Now all that's left to do on the dress is to give it closures. I decide to use a snap closure for the skirt and make it nice and snug. For the bodice, I'm going to use some pink Velcro. I really hate sewing on Velcro because it's annoying and kind of difficult, but it certainly helps my morale on the rare occasions that the Velcro itself matches the actual item of clothing. Very satisfying. Oh my gosh, guys, I love this dress. But we're not done yet. For the piece du resistance, or however you say that, I have these beautiful paper flowers to add to her dress and hair. I first tried gluing them on, but that didn't work at all. So needle and thread it is. For the flowers adorning her hair, I simply used a pin to attach them to the side of her head. I didn't want to go overboard, so I kept it to only a few flowers on each side of the skirt. I didn't end up using the smaller flowers because it just felt like too much. And now to add a few details. A Rapunzel tiara, which is actually from the Mattel version of Rapunzel, that was released when the movie came out. I had an extra one in my stock. <laughs> a frying pan accessory that I think came from a Rapunzel mini animator doll set, and a little Pascal on her shoulder. And here she is, Princess Rapunzel. 
It's such an honor to meet you, Rapunzel. You're one of my favorite princesses. We actually met before at the Magic Kingdom in Disney World a few years ago. Remember me? I know a little girl named Ava who will be really excited to meet you too. Rapunzel is one of my top favorite Disney princesses. She has a beautiful and unique design that I always feel is difficult to capture in 2D art and in real life, like cosplay, face characters, etc. I've been longing to make a Rapunzel custom doll for ages, and being commissioned to do this was the perfect way to make me work through my fear of not being able to cap capture Rapunzel's look in my art. The only sad thing for me is that I don't get to keep her. But even more special is the fact that she gets to live in a new home with a super sweet little girl who loves her. And as an artist, I don't think I could ask for anything more heartwarming. I hope you enjoyed seeing something I haven't done in a while on this channel, Disney. Would you like to see more Disney dolls on this channel? Please let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see, and maybe I'll be encouraged to do more Disney dolls. I still have materials and plans to make custom 17-inch dolls of, like, every princess, <laughs> which was my ambition over the past few years. So, yeah, let me know and maybe I'll finally actually do it. Thank you so much for watching, and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't yet. There's always more doll magic in store here on the Doll Fairy channel. I can't wait to see you guys again soon. Bye.